All right, we're back here. Um, we were talking a little bit about the general warranty deed. Now, I want to remind everybody, remember it had five, uh, <clears throat> five guarantees, so that's what you need to know. So we talked a little bit about what title insurance was, but now the question is, you know, why do we need title insurance? Why buy it? I mean, after all, don't we do title search? And yeah, the question is yes, of course we do a title search. Unfortunately, there's a lot of good title searchers out there, um, or abstractors as they are called, um, uh, but there's still hidden hazards that emerge from the closing. Not necessarily the title person's fault, okay? There are things that nefarious people, that's a pretty big word for a 10-year-old, isn't it? You thought you'd like that. Nefarious things that people will try and do. Um, and it's amazing that this is a whole, you know, this just amazes me that uh, title insurance is because people lie and people cheat. If we didn't lie and cheat, we wouldn't need any of this, all right? Because one of the most important things and one of the things I've seen at least two or three times were forged signatures. You know, people that uh, weren't supposed to transfer the property actually transferred the property because they forged someone else's signature, all right? Um, I have seen errors pop up. And not like no runs, no hits, no errors. That's not a baseball joke. I mean, H-E-I-R-S. Uh, owners to the property that were going to be sold. We had one, I don't know, it's been five, six, seven years ago. We had a deal where a house was going to be sold and it was sold by the daughter. Father passed away. And bada bing, lo and behold, uh, a guy steps up challenging uh, the ownership, said he was an illegitimate son of the guy and had rights to the property and became a whole big battle of, and you know, the, the guy that passed away, unfortunately, wasn't worth, you know, he was not like Gates or anybody like that. Uh, but this, another guy popped up and claimed ownership to the property and said, hey, I don't want it sold. I'm claiming rights to the property. Um, <clears throat> Powers of attorney, a lot of times it says here, instruments, if you look on your chart, the word instrument is a document. Documents signed under an expired or fabricated power of attorney. I love that. Instruments executed. That's uh, legal speak because uh, attorneys need a job, I guess. Instruments executed under an expired or fabricated, which means lied or fake power of attorney. So this would kind of go with the first one about the forged. Somebody would just flat out sign someone else's name. Sometimes uh, I've, you do a lot of deals with someone that's a power of attorney. Uh, and we had a situation. I just recently, well, that one I just told you about, the $12,000 one uh, that was in cash. Uh, originally started out as a power of attorney. Uh, but at, lo and behold, it, it come to find out that the woman that was thought she was helping her mother's good friend and she had known for 30 or 40 years the good friend was now in a nursing home she thought she was helping them by telling everybody she was under a power of attorney to do to list the house for sale and yada 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 and couldn't produce the power of attorney and then really said well you know she gave it to me orally she told me to do what I needed to do and we had to actually go through some hoops and do a legal process of her of the lady actually giving true power of attorney and she gave it freely so, yeah um no uh the question was would the listing have been false yes the listing would have been false because it was signed under a false power of attorney uh <clears throat> so that has to do with uh we went back and and i went back and had the listing re-signed again um the purchase agreement, you know, was, was, was fine. Um, and of course there's obviously mistakes in the, uh, did I answer that right? Well, I, I answered it right. I mean, did I answer it sufficiently for you? <laughs> That's what I should have said. Of course I answered it right. <laughs> uh, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. Um, yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question was, yes, what was the listing invalid? For those of you playing along at home at the home version, was the listing invalid? 
Um, I hate to use the word invalid. Was it not correct? Uh, that sounds a lot easier. Uh, yeah, you know, the, uh, and probably part of that would have been uh, my fault. And I'm actually sorry we started this conversation, but thank you very much. Uh, sometimes it behooves me not to stick my own foot in my own mouth. Um, yes, that was probably my fault. So let's go on record and say I'm going to own this mistake uh, because the lady that met me was referred to. Okay, here's the story. Let's back up. Lady calls me and says, I've got a referral. This was a past client of mine, a lot of investor, investor that I do a lot of stuff in. See, you guys are now getting, taking a left turn here, but uh, I, it, maybe it'll help you out. Said she's got a friend of hers who is working f as a power of attorney for her aunt. That's how the story started, okay? So when we met with the lady, the lady fessed up. Yes, she had a power of attorney, but it wasn't her aunt. It was her mom's, you know, best friend for life. And she's been raised like an aunt, and she still goes and sees her uh, in the nursing home and things like this. The aunt, and I'm using finger quotes for you at home, did not have any kids. So this girl took it upon herself under some verbal direction from the aunt to sell her home because she was the closest thing to a kid she had. All right. So that lady came to me from a referral from one of my investors. I met with her. She wanted to list the house. She wanted to list it for just, you know, she didn't really care. We listed it at 15000 She was going to work under a power of attorney. When we signed the listing agreement, she signed it, you know, her name, by, uh, the girl's name, uh, the aunt, finger quotes, aunt's name by her name, POA, power of attorney. And uh, I did not, A, ask to see it so that's probably in my error um here i'd been three people down the line i assumed everybody was legitimate um so ultimately what we ended up doing was going to the nursing home and having the lady truly give power of attorney to my client all right <clears throat> or to the lady got it are you happy now so yeah yeah you got me on record now saying that was that was my fault um i apologize there's also potentially just mistakes in public records. Uh, I saw a first get recorded second and a second get recorded first. They got switched in the recording process. So um, there are mistakes that can happen. So because of all of that, we want to buy some insurance policy. I mean, let's face it. It's an insurance policy, folks. How many in here have got car insurance? Yeah, we all got car insurance, health insurance, life insurance, you know, flood insurance, earthquake insurance. <laughs> Do you know that they actually have alien abduction insurance? Uh, I don't. It, it's true. I was reading it on the Internet. It's got to be true. Um, all the title insurance does is it affords some protection, some monetary or financial protection against things that happen that we don't plan on. All right. By the time the person that's insured has to pay to defend themselves for attorneys or perfect the title, there could be a lot of costs involved with that. So actually, we just buy this insurance policy to protect ourselves, all right? Uh, realizing that your home is the most important investment, okay? So ask your title insurance. It will protect you against hazards like these, okay? That's all it is. Um, I think it's, everybody thinks it's this big, grand, grand, glorious secret. It's an insurance policy. You wreck your car, you have car insurance, you uh, get the insurance company to fix it. Same thing here. You buy homeowner, uh, I don't want to say homeowner's insurance. Well, uh, further example, okay, hold on. Ho uh, homeowner's insurance, home gets destroyed, you fix the home. Title insurance protects the ownership. Think of it that way. So if someone comes and challenges your ownership to the house for whatever reason, false title, uh, the, somebody claims the title was sold to them earlier, uh, somebody claims that they did some work and have a lien against the property, uh, somebody is lying. There, so there's all kinds of, and I'm using finger quotes, wrecks that can happen 
in the transfer of title from one person to the other. This is the title insurance that covers that, okay? That's all it is. Now, um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Take a small break and uh, let you guys go out and do, get some wiggle room going.